So before we start reading our second poem by Jean Toomer, which is called November Cotton Flower, I just want to give you a little bit of background. So in 1921 in Georgia, okay, see this little bugger here? It's called the bow weevil. And this apparently um, destroyed cotton crops, okay? And remember, Jean Toomer was drawing a lot of his inspiration from his experience in Georgia while he was teaching at the time, okay? Um, and so just so you understand, okay, the bow evil um, destroyed cotton crops, okay, which was obviously a important crop to the South at this time. So I'm going to do a cold read as I've been doing first, and then I'll go back and analyze line by line, okay? So it's called November Cotton Flower by Jean Toomer. Bull weevil coming and the winter's cold made cotton stalks look rusty, seasons old, and cotton, scarce as any southern snow, was vanishing. The branch, so pinched and slow, failed its function as the autumn rake. Drought-fighting soil had caused the soil to take all water from the stream. Dead birds were found in wells a hundred feet below the ground. Such was the season when the flower bloomed. Old folks were startled, and it soon assumed significance. Superstition saw something it had never seen before. Brown eyes that loved without a trace of fear. Beauty so sudden for that time of year. Okay, so the first thing that we should be taking note of is the line number. So there's 14 lines, and so what's the question that we should ask ourselves? Hmm, is this a sonnet? Okay, um, in fact it is, and we're going to first analyze the rhyme scheme. So you'll notice that cold and old rhyme, so we would say A, A. Snow and slow rhyme, so B, B. Rake and pick rhyme, C, C. Found and ground rhyme, D, D. Gloomed, assumed, E, E. Saw and before. Hmm, that does not rhyme, okay? And so we want to kind of put a little asterisk in our mind. Uh, lines 11 and 12 do not rhyme, and yet fear and year at the end do. So this poem is made up of rhyming couplets, except for the two lines. Now that rhyme scheme does not adhere to either of the sonnets that we have studied. However, the content will help reveal what type of sonnet this is. So let's continue to analyze and see if we can figure out whether this is an English or Shakespearean sonnet or an Italian or Petrarchian sonnet, okay? So let's look at the first line, right? We're talking about that bug that I have just talked about, okay? The bow weevils coming and the winter's cold. Um, and these things in the very first line continue on the second line. They made cotton stalks look rusty, right? So that word rusty there, is that positive or negative? We're talking about diction here. Okay, arguably not a positive line. I picture, you know, rusty, old, not, not useful anymore. It's not clean, right? Seasons old and cotton scarce as any southern snow. So does it typically snow down south? No, right? So we're saying that the cotton is scarce, right? What figurative language is this? Scarce as any southern snow. Oops, I didn't write it in there. I thought I did. Anyway, it is a simile because we're using as, right? So cotton is scarce as any southern snow is vanishing, right? The branch, and you have to look here, whenever you see a number, you got to look at the footnote. Okay, so the footnote at the bottom indicates that branch means creeks or streams, right? So the creeks and streams are so pinched. In other words, they're so depleted and slow that they failed its function as the autumn rake. Right. So here we see another simile. 
right, as the autumn rake? What typically functions as the rake? We know, those of you that help your parents out in the yard during autumn, you have to rake up all those leaves. Well, typically, what does that here? Streams wash away all of the autumn leaves. However, because there's so much desolation and there's not much rain, um, and these crops seem to have be, to be vanishing, okay, it's no longer doing that, okay? Drought fighting soil, right? So the soil is fighting the drought, has caused the soil to take all water from the streams. And so those are dried up, right? Dead birds, okay? Dead birds were found in wells 100 feet below the ground. This is not pleasant. So when we have images of dead animals, okay, continuing talking about droughts and we're talking about um, bugs that are making the cotton stalks look rusty, this is not a pleasant um, time. In fact, it would, it would contribute to the mood of despairing, right? However, what's interesting in line nine here, it says, such was the season when the flower bloomed, right? So those first eight lines talk about death and desolation and barrenness and being parched, right? And then we have this line where there's a shift that happens. A flower blooms. What is the likelihood of a flower boom, blooming in such conditions? It's not great. And so we have um, an interesting thing that's occurring here. So let's look at line 10. Old folks were startled and it soon assumed significance. So these old people, okay, presumably the people that live around these cotton crops, they are surprised by this. And this blossoming flower, this blooming flower takes on some significance. What might a flower that is growing at a time like this assume? Arguably, it's hope. It's a symbol of hope, right? Superstition saw something it had never seen before. Brown eyes that loved without a trace of fear. Beauty so sudden for that time of year. So I want to point out here. Okay. Sorry, I did not time this well, but I did annotate. You might have noticed that this section here, okay, there's a lot of the F sound, which is quite harsh. And I think what's happening is um, the flower is breaking through that desolation, okay? And in the very end, that harshness seems to kind of go away. We have brown eyes and beauty, right, um, that kind of dominate what we see at the very end here okay so where does the shift take place in the poem okay i would say it takes place right here the end of the octave okay and then of course in the sestet what happens is there's this blossoming and so which sonnet would this be? Would this be Shakespearean or would this be Petrarch, Petrarchan? Okay, this is a Petrarchan sonnet. All right. All right. I hope that analysis helped you.